Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Lady Nika. And with a story that I found to be quite interesting, guys. Quite interesting. I'm going to run it to you while I'm on this little break. I guess I'm in an area where you won't hear too much noise. Uh, girl, I recorded a whole 17-minute damn video, and the shit is just gone. I have no idea where it went, family. But anyway... Let's talk about this article I found while I was over here just sifting through the news to see what was going on. Child, do y'all know that a man, popcorn stuck in a man's tooth leads to life-threatening infection and open-heart surgery? Mm-hmm. A 41-year-old British man who attempted to dislodge a piece of popcorn stuck in his teeth using various objects claims later he developed a life-threatening infection that required him to undergo open-heart surgery. One Adam Martin, a firefighter and father of three from Cornwall, England, said he noticed a piece of popcorn stuck in the back tooth after he and his wife watched the movie back in September. For three days, he was unable to remove the popcorn. He claims to have used multiple objects a pin lid, a toothpick, a piece of wire, even a metal nail to remove the food but was unsuccessful and even damaged his surrounding gum when doing so. A week later, Martin began to suffer from night sweats, fatigue, and headaches, all of which he initially thought were signs of the flu, but would later find out that they were signs of endocarditis, which is an infection of the endocardium, which is the lining of the interior surfaces of the chambers of the heart. I know that well, child. The infection occurs when bacteria from the mouth, skin, intestines, or other areas of the body enters the bloodstream. By October, Martin's symptoms had yet to subside, leading him to see a doctor who diagnosed him with a mild heart murmur and sent him home. But when he continued to feel unwell, he went to Corn uh, Royal Cornwall Hospital. I had a feeling that there was something seriously wrong. I was sleeping an awful lot and I felt terrible, he recalled. I had a uh, aches and pains in my legs and I did not feel right at all. I was admitted to the hospital the same day for tests and by this point I was very worried. Martin added, I felt quite ill and I knew I was not right at all. Scans of his chest showed his heart was damaged to the infection. Due to the infection, he was transferred to a different hospital where he reportedly underwent a seven-hour open-heart surgery to repair his mitral valve and replace his aortic valve. My heart was not working properly anymore. It essentially was wrecked. The infection had eaten, away the, val had eaten the valves away. If I had gone to the dentist in the first place, none of this would have happened. At one point, it was touch and go. It was the worst experience of my life, he continued. I wasn't far off death's door and extremely lucky. The popcorn stuck in my teeth is the only possible cause I can think of, and I am never eating pop can popcorn again for sure. It's crazy to think that this all happened because of that. It was something so trivial. Martin's wife, Helen, told the news uh, that her husband's infection could have been easily treated with antibiotics that had, if it had been caught sooner. Any signs of a toothache, bleeding gums, and abscess, get it checked out, she advised. Your gums are a bacterial highway to your heart. Girl, ain't that something? Ain't that something? Baby, let me tell you something. I am so serious when it comes to my heart. I play no games when it comes to it. It's amazing that something so small can turn into something so big. That's why I'm always preaching to my family and my friends about getting checked out. I know we live in a country where we're supposed to have affordable health care, but that is not so for many, many Americans today. That's a talking point for later on. Why do we live in one of the most richest countries in the world and yet we have millions of Americans still walking around today that don't have affordable health care. They don't have insurance. They can't go to a doctor. I'm blessed that I have it. I'm blessed that I work and I put money away to make sure that I continue to have it. But what about those Americans who don't? This man could have been dead to the bed. Thank God he had, uh, but the, he lived in England. Thank God he was able to go to the doctor. I think about things that happen here in our very own little, our own country, where things like this small stuff, I've heard these stories before, and it, it bothers me. 
People don't want to go to the doctor to get the simplest things checked out, even though the simplest things may be the thing that you need to go get checked out because it could lead to something bigger and have you dead to the bed. And I don't want that for anybody. Also, it, it, it shows you that you do need to get second opinions. When you know that your body is not functioning properly and you go to your doctor and she tell you or he tell you ain't nothing wrong with you, then you should go and get a second opinion if you continue to feel bad because you know your body better than anybody. And what one doctor miss, another doctor may not. So take care of yourself. Your body is your greatest asset, honey. You can't do nothing if that thing start working on you, okay? So take care of yourselves. And don't be afraid to go to the doctor. I don't care if you got to go back, back and forth. I remember, let me give you a quick story time. I had a neighbor one time. He kept saying he didn't feel good. He would say he feel fatigued. He said he had headaches. And he kept going to the emergency room. They kept denying him. At first, they was giving him narcotics. I guess they was trying to see if he was a quote-unquote abuser. After the narcotic thing stopped, they started saying that it was mental. Had the boy going and see, seeing uh, psychiatrists and everything. They even one time, he got mad at an appointment because they were not listening to him, but they were trying to tell him how he feel. He got a little belligerent and wound up being on a 72-hour hole. Only to get out, and a month later, pass out in his yard, be rushed to the hospital, only to find out that boy had a fucking tumor. All for about a year, y'all, I watched this boy go back and forth to the doctor each time they giving him medication that he don't need, and then after that, they started trying to make it seem like it was mental, and then after that, they, he passed out and they found it. It had been, they, the size of it, thank God they was able to remove it, but he had had it. You could tell, they said it started off as a mining growth. And it grew. And the boy passed out and could have, he could have died had he not passed out in their yard that day. And the thing is, he was planning on going back to the doctor the next day because it was on a Sunday and we and he and I had just finished talking and he was like, I'm going back up there again because I just don't feel right. And they would not listen to that man for nothing in the world. That Sunday, God said, well, I'm going to make sure that they listen to you this time. Bloop, he fell out, had to be rushed to the hospital and that's what they found and they had to do an emergency surgery on him. He's much better today. You have to advocate for yourself sometimes. These doctors, some of them are not as dedicated as what we would like to see doctors be. I don't know if it's because of the money situation. They not getting paid right. They not getting paid for certain services. I don't know what it is. But whatever it is, it's something serious. And again, I have to say, you better advocate for you. Because if you don't, who going to do it? Imagine sitting at home watching a movie, get a piece of popcorn large in your teeth. Most of us going to go get a two pig or a piece of floss or something, try to get it out. He couldn't get it out. He kept trying to use various things instead of just going to the dentist and letting the dentist deal with it. He thought it was something simple, and he ended up months later having open heart surgery. We got to take care of ourselves and pay attention. And don't just excuse things. See, when I was in my 20s and early 30s, you know, in the I can believe I can fly years. That's what I like to call the 20s and the early 30s. Them the I can believe I can fly years. I used to, things would be going on and I wouldn't worry about it. Guess what? I had a little scar on me. It was a minute little scar, but it would never heal. That was the beginning of me going down this path with lupus. It started off with a very small little scar, a little sore on my arm. And it moved. It became bigger. I started getting them in other parts of my body. But I'm in my late 20s. I'm not thinking. And eventually it did kind of look like it got better. So I didn't worry about it. But had I jumped on it right then, 
I probably wouldn't have went through some of the stuff that I've gone on this lupus journey. I wouldn't have gone through it had I done what I was supposed to do to take care of my better care of myself. I knew I wasn't feeling right. I knew I had never had problems with my skin and breaking out. I knew I had never suffered hair loss or nothing like that before. But I didn't want to pay attention to the signs. I, I called it everything else. I diagnosed myself. I said I was stressed out, girl. Then I thought I had me a little case of strep throat. I was lucky just like that man was to have it caught at a time that it was caught. And they were able to get me on medications and get me uh, a regimen that works for me. Because what regimen worked for one lupus person may not work for the next person. It's just, you know, they basically play Russian roulette with your life trying to get a mixture of meds that work for you. And that's what I went through. Now, it's to my understanding it's better today. But it did happen like that back here in the 90s with me. Okay? The late 90s. Anyway, I just thought that was very interesting and I wanted to talk about it. I also wanted to um, let you guys know, you know, if you do want to support VS helping with the cash app, please do so. Because that money not just necessarily going to her. What about her kids? They have to have things to, you know, keep them going while their mom is away from them. And the money that you guys are donating is going in that direction as well. Now, I'm not here to discuss with you whether or not she was right or she was wrong. I'm here to appeal to you as a mother. If you got any heart and you got a couple of dollars, please take the time to hit up the cash app, dollar sign, cash app, the, you know, the cash app dollar sign. V-S-T-S-C-C. Cash dollar sign V-S-T-S-C-C. Those proceeds are going toward what her children need and whatever it is that we can do to help her in this in her time of need. V-S has helped a lot of people on these streets. Whether you want to give it to her or not, she has. And yes, we did have our moment. But I could put differences aside for the greater good of my people. That's a mother and that's that's my people. Now, some of y'all don't have it in your hearts to do it. That's fine. You're entitled to feel how you want to. I'm not here to make you feel good or make you feel bad. I'm talking to the people with a heart and that wants to give. And I'm talking to the people with a heart that want to give and can't give. I'm asking you to send our prayers because you and I both know if you got any type of spiritual belief that the word says when one or two are gathered. OK, so if you can't give her anything, give her a prayer that'll take her further than this cash. But if you can give her a dollar or two or three, please hit the cash out and go to dollar sign V.S.T.S.C.C. And make your next move, your best move toward helping this young lady in her time of need with what she needs, including the upkeep of her children right now. If you don't have it in your heart and she didn't did something to you and you don't want to do it and you see her as pure evil, that's fine. I don't need to hear about it. Keep that to yourself. But if you do care and you do want to help her in some kind of way. The best way to help her is by making sure, helping her to have a peace of mind for her children. Again, the cash app is V-S-T-S-C-C. Dollar sign V-S-T-S-C-C. All proceeds going directly to V-S children. And, and the, whatever her, her family, the people who are in charge of this, her mom, whatever is needed, that is what uh, those funding will go to. And if you want to help, help. Like I said, there's a lot of people got issues with it and they don't want to help. And that's fine. You don't have to. But I don't have to hear about it either. If you don't want to help, just keep going. Keep it pushing. Put the thumbs down and keep it moving because that's usually what y'all do. I don't need to hear about it in my comment section. That's what I came to do. Later on today when I get off, I'm going to try to do a live, you know, to help support even further. But if I cannot do a live, this is my live for today. If you care and you can and you want to, the cash app is dollar sign V-S-T-S-C-C. All proceeds going to a V.S. Conscious and her family. OK, that's if you feel like it. If you don't, if you want to help and you can't help, please pray for her in this time. If you don't want to help, then carry your ass on somewhere and you ain't got to tell me about it because it's not necessary. That's it. That's all. 
I came in to do what I had to do and I did it. Now it's time for me to go back to work. Now, in closing, as always, y'all know I'm going to put the uh, link to the article to which we discussed up in the pinned comments. I'm also going to have in the pinned comments VS's um, cash app tag for those of you who may want to support her and her time and needs. And if those of you who want to support but don't have it honestly to do it, send a prayer for her. That's more powerful than a dollar, okay? Remember, the death of your struggle will determine the height of your success. In the meantime, in between time, please remember to rate the video. Ratings get me recognized on the YouTube streets. Comment down below in the panic section. Let me know what you thought about that article involving the man with the popcorn and the open heart surgery. Uh, I'm, I really want to know what you guys thought about that. And um, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, as well as my backup channel, Lady Nika Live, please subscribe to both of my channels, hitting the notification bell once you subscribe, setting it to all so that each and every time I drop a pre-recorded video or go live from this channel, you guys are going to get a notification and you can come over and join in the conversation. Have a great remainder to your Tuesday. If I do not go live, this is my live for today. Uh-huh. This is my support for today. Have a wonderful remainder to your Tuesday, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.